Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECU, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, talented, most gracious, one of the best people to ever step out of Jamaica, got a flag with her. Miss Jamaica's in the building. <laughs> 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 well, go on in, I'm Adele. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media p- platforms. And let me tell you something. We have a membership section. If y'all want to get me exclusive on our content, because a lot of y'all, we meet y'all, y'all say, y'all, oh, I subscribe, I watch, and so forth. And some of y'all I be checking because y'all really ain't subscribed. Y'all just watching that stuff. But please subscribe. Hit that subscription bell, notification. But if y'all really want to be down with us, you've got to sign up for the membership. How you do so is under each and every video right here in the description section. There is a link that says join our membership. Click that link, follow all the instructions, and let me tell you, you see a lot of content that not everybody see. Thank you very much for all the love and support. Man, it's going down. We got a special guest in here today. She needs no introduction. She is who she says she is. Stop playing with her, man. She hails. She's all the way here from New York to Las Vegas, y'all. Check out designers in the building, a.k.a. Flavor Flav's daughter. Let's stop playing. <laughs> I don't play with that. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you for having me. It's the one and only Cushy Simone, you know. Design. Cushy Simone. She wanted me to call her Cushy. I seen her on the uh, YouTube as designer. I don't know what to call her. When did you change to Cushy? And who called you? Who, who gave you that name? She smoked so, so. much damn weed, they started calling her Cushy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that's exactly how I got the name. <laughs> so I was a freshman in college, and my roommate at the time, she's like, she, well, at the time, she was church going, never cussed. Never smoked, never drank. You converted her. Yep. Yep. Ah. Yep. I did. Instead of, <laughs> I'm sorry. instead of her influencing you, you end up influencing her. Yeah, I did. Just a little bit, just a little bit, you know. And I get really, really, really high. I like weed. I love weed. I love smoking weed. Makes mm. me happy. And one day we was there. It was her first time smoking a blunt. We high as hell in the room sitting there listening to Wiz Khalifa and Drake. And in the song, he said, son, 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 my girl's so bad, I call her cushy. And my roommate just turned at me real slow and was like, (laughs) that's you. You cushy. I knew it. And I was like, what? So ever since then, everybody been calling me cushy. It's so real. I got it tatted on my arm. Wow. Wow. Tatted to the game. What's the craziest thing you've ever done? The highest you've ever been. Ooh. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, tell so me. That boils down to the best ganja smoke that you ever smoked in your life. The that highest was, I've ever or been. Or edible, huh? It could be anything yes. nowadays. So, okay, it, it was edible. I was in college. Because <laughs> they said edible would be taking you to that. Girl, yeah. listen. So, my friend's mom... She it was her birthday mm-hmm. and she made us weed brownies. But now that I'm older and a little more educated with weed, <laughs> I know that you're supposed to actually like cook the weed and then drain it, strain oh, it, really? do all this. Yeah, like I it, didn't know that I would have just threw the weed in there. So that's what she did. <laughs> she just threw the weed in there and then threw it in the oven and baked it and we I ate about four of them things thinking that I was tough. <laughs> and I was sitting there with my eyes closed and my head back and my mouth open. For three hours, <laughs> but I was up like I was awake, and I was just sitting there like, yeah, I'm high. I can't open my eyes though, but I'm here, y'all. And everybody was just laughing at me, but I was so high like for three hours. I was stuck in the same spot. My eyes were shut. I, they were so heavy. But it was good. That Listen, that's that cushy of, right there, baby. <laughs> but that's you know, cushy in the building. You know that reminds me of that movie, I'm um, Trapped. Where he threw the um, the weed and the grease when they were cooking. The, oh yeah, <laughs> when they was cooking the, the, fried, fried, the chicken. fried chicken. Uh-huh. Yeah, with Mike Epps. You're not C-Kai. supposed to do that. But the, it doesn't do anything to you, does it? If you eat it. 
Um, so you have to activate the weed first. So what you're supposed to do is grind it up or whatever, break it down, then throw it in the oven for like five, ten minutes just so it can activate the THC and stuff in it. Then you could cook it in your butter or cook it in like... But it still did a job. You got as high as a kite. Yeah, but it's like, who want to be eating like weed pieces and stuff? Like, I don't want that all in my teeth and stuff. Yeah, let's like, back this up, man. We're going too far. Okay. I want to take this back. I want to do it the way Boss okay. Talk 101 do it. Let's get to it. So he said, well, uh, you came from New York, so you're born and raised in New York? Yes, born and raised, the Bronx, New York. Shout out to the BX, you heard. But you don't even have the accent. When I get mad, or like if, if we having like a long conversation, like, yeah. and I'll start talking about stuff, like dead ass, I'm not even playing, word, son, like I start talking like that, so. <laughs> How old were you when you left? Um... Well, it's been, November's going to be five years. So I was like 27. Oh, so you were grown. Yeah, cause, yeah. And you, the accent, dang. I moved around a lot. Okay. So, like, I've lived in North Carolina. I've lived in Cali for a little bit. I lived in upstate New York. I lived okay. in New York City. Like, my mom was kind of like a gypsy, so we moved everywhere. So did you, okay, so were you raised with your mom and your dad in the same household? No, 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 no. Okay. By the time they were together for, like, maybe, like, the first five years, Six years, years of your life. Yeah. Well, no, because, all right, Kayla's four years younger than me. So, yeah, like the first five, six years of my life. Do you remember? Then, a little bit, yeah. I remember my dad's apartment. Like, our room used to have, like, a lot of toys. I remember this one toy. It was, like, a washing machine. Mm -hmm. And I would stuff all the clothes in there, act like I was washing the clothes mm -hmm. with my hand and stuff. And then, like, I was obsessed with Barney, so Barney was all Purple over the place. everywhere. Yeah. Well, like, let me tell you something about them born the tapes, man. I sold so many of them hoes, I could have got rich, man. We had a plug <laughs> on the warehouse. Them kids were going crazy. We was we were selling them joints like to everybody. My boy was hitting them. I was getting case at the case. We were <laughs> we were flooding the market, man. Underground railroad, the black market. We were killing it. So I'm probably one of the dudes to make sure you got them tapes. I'm man. about to say because we needed you, man. We needed you. All right? I give you the plug. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you half off. Sometimes if you get too excited, I'm charging it almost. Ticket price. <laughs> Do I get family discount? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, it's lit. It's lit. It's lit. <laughs> One thing I always talk about is, um, okay, so your dad and your mom split up whenever, you know, five years old. But your dad was still a part of your life? Um, so in the beginning, it was kind of like shaky. Um, you know, him and my, my dad, if people don't know, you know, he's had his struggles throughout life, you mm -hmm. know, so that kind of played a part in him and my mom's relationship. And you so, saw that? Were you witnessing it or did they do these things behind closed doors? So, like, I've never really seen, like, his struggles up close in person, but mm -hmm. I've seen, like, arguments, you know, okay. I've seen disagreements, things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard conversations that I shouldn't have heard, but, like, my mom, even when my mom and my dad didn't see eye to eye and they didn't get along, she always would say, that's your father, you got to respect him. Right. You know, so, you know, I, growing up, we haven't always had the best relationship, but now that's like my best friend, my dad. Wow. I call him for everything. <laughs> but did you feel like that affected your relationship with him or affected your relationship in life with men? Because I hear people, especially females, talk about um, because of the relationship I have with my dad, I can't have you know, relation, positive relationship with any males or the, this is the reason why I act out. How did that affect your life and what happened? It definitely affected my life a lot. Like, mm -hmm. my mom, she's a very dominant woman already. And then not having my dad there in my life, you know, on a consistent basis to show me all the time how a man should treat me and how, you know my role as a woman, as a woman. <clears throat> so i'm very dominant and aggressive so some men tend to be intimidated by me mm -hmm. you know they they're like oh you think you a nigga and mm -hmm. it's like no i know i'm a woman you mm -hmm. know i'm just very independent and i'm very dominant <clears throat> i'm gonna speak my mind always i don't need you for anything like i can take care of myself you know and sometimes I haven't always expressed that in the best way, so it doesn't show up in my relationships very well. So it definitely played a part when it comes to that. Like, and then even like with just me and my dad, you know, him not being around and me seeing my friends and their dads are around, you know, and it's like, well, 
everybody knows that I have this celebrity dad, but he's never around, right. you know? So it's like, it would be a lot of times where people would be like, oh, you're lying. Yeah, I was about to say, did they teach you? Especially because looking at him, and there's like, okay, he's as dark as a, I, and then looking at right. you, and I'm like, but you don't look nothing like your dad. And I'm like, hold up. No, you lying. He's not your dad. Da, da, da. I dealt with that my whole entire life. Did you fight life. because of it? I done been jumped. I done had the Every night I got to fight to prove my love, okay? <laughs> like, I done had to do it all. I done been followed home before. Mm. Like, just, like you said, people, oh, that's not your father. You're too light-skinned. Oh, show me baby pictures. And so now as an adult, I'm trying to, because my dad yells at me all the time. Oh, you need to tell people who you are. You need to remember who you are, where you come from and stuff. But because I dealt with so much negative when I did tell people growing up, it's hard for me to break that, you know, mm -hmm. that habit. It's like, no, I'm scared to tell people because now they're going to make me jump through hoops to prove who I am. And do you feel like, because I would be like, why do I have to prove this to you anyway? Now that I'm an adult, yeah. Right. When I was a kid, it's like, I want friends. Like, right. I want people to like me. Like, I want, you know, the regular life that everybody else got, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to treat me different or think that I think I'm better than because my dad. Like, no, I just want to be liked, you know? Right. But now that I'm an adult, oh, I don't got to prove nothing to you. My daddy is who my daddy is, and if you don't believe me, oh, well. You're going to see me, though, and when you see me, I don't want you saying, oh, my gosh, oh, you remember me? <laughs> uh, remember you from where? I don't, I don't know you, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> man, and when did you realize that your daddy was who he is? A celebrity. So I always knew he was a celebrity. I didn't understand the significance of his celebrity until I was an adult. Like I was really a, that yeah, long. Yeah, like I was like in college when I actually under like I knew he made an impact, but I guess because I hold, held on to that grudge, you know, of him not being around and stuff like that, and like you know, he's just dad to me. Like, he's mm -hmm, not an mm -hmm. icon. He's not mm -hmm. a rock and roll Hall of Famer. He's not a rapper. He's not none of that to me. That's dad. He all that to me. I mean, now he's all <laughs> of those Every damn things. bit plus of it. Dad. Yeah, now he's all of those yeah. things plus dad because I understand the significance. Yeah. Like, he has changed laws in Arizona and New Mexico for black people. Like, you know, he helped, he's a found, founding father of a whole genre Hip of pop. music. You yeah. feel me? Like He was just in Paris the other day. For the Olympics. Like, Arrived. he was there for a month and I kept calling him like, when are you coming home? Dad, I miss you. Like, <laughs> I'm so bored and alone. Like, <laughs> you know. And but. it was so crazy scene. I did not, did you know he could play the piano? Hell no, I know. All I know is that he, boy, he, like, plays, he plays over 14 instruments and he's self taught on that's all cold. of them. That's wow. Cold. Yeah. That's cold. That like, was shocking. It doesn't surprise me though, because I know already what we're dealing with when you start to talk about Flavor Flav, like hip hop, uh, the core of, of, of standing for, for, for who we are as a people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just, it's an honor to have you on the show. You know what I'm Thank saying? Thank you. I appreciate um, it. I got a question. I, I just thought about this. As a kid growing up, and I know you say you didn't know the state till you got older, but when you saw him walking in and he would have, did you ever see him as a kid with that big old clock around his neck? That man don't take that clock off. <laughs> okay? Like, he take it off when we in the house, you know, to sleep and stuff. But if we go outside, it was one time. I was in eighth grade. I'll never forget this day. And... He was. He came to visit us in New York. He was taking a shopping, summer uh, school clothes shopping, and we're on our way to the mall. We just moved to a new city and stuff. And I'm like, oh god, An another one. Like we gonna deal with this again? I already know it's about to be a lot of people. We ain't gonna get nothing done. Long story short, we leave the house. He forgot his clock. What? This man, we was like 10 minutes out and then he remembers he forgot his car. <laughs> this man made us turn all the way around just to go back to the house to get his clock. And I'm like, Dad, can you please? Like, I'm arguing with him. You know, I'm a little 13, 14 year old girl. And I'm just like, no, don't wear it, please. Nobody's going to notice you. Like, I'm happy he forgot the damn clock. <laughs> and he's like, oh, like he called me his nickname. He has a nickname for me. What is it? Mommers. 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 Yeah. Little mommers in there. <laughs> yeah. 
What he, the heck is a mommers? for all his kids. He don't because call us. Because you're a mama's us. baby? No, I don't know how he thought of mommers, but that's okay. my name. So he's like, mommers, come on, man. That's me, G. I got to be me, G. I, can't, I feel naked without me. That's a part of me. And I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> so we go back. We get the clock. We go to the mall. We in the store. I'm like, oh, we made it to a store. Nobody noticed us. I'm happy as hell. I go in the dressing room. My dad wanted me to try these jeans on to make sure they was appropriate. I go put the jeans on. I wasn't even in there for two minutes. I come out. It's a line outside of the store <laughs> of people. Talking about flavor play, flavor play, flavor play. I was like, oh. God. Wow, that's dead. Did you hate that? I hated it so much as a kid. Like, bro. I just want to shop. I just want to eat. Can y'all leave us alone? Why y'all want to take his picture? Like, I didn't understand, you know? But now I'm an adult, and I get how important he is. I get how he lights up, like, so many people's life. He lights up the world. Because I do the same thing. Like, yeah. oh, everybody tells me, like, yo, you just, like, a ray of sunshine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I understand it now. So now I'm like, if I see people that are too scared to ask, I'd be like, you want a picture? Right. They'd be like, yeah, yeah, can that's you ask? Right, and I'd be right. like, yeah, come on. And then they'll, they'll, it'll blow their mind when they hear me say, dad, yo, this person want a picture. They'd be like, you his daughter? That's all right, that's all right. Yeah, so I'd be like, yeah, I got you. Like, so it's like you're helping really just saying, man, you know, you're embracing the fact that people love your, your family, y'all, you yeah. know, him, you, uh, that you, you're part of him, so they love you too, you know? Yeah. You see how the reaction is when they see you with him, so that's, that's a blessing. Yeah. Now, now I see it as that. Like, I definitely am very blessed to have the dad and the experiences that I'm able to have. What's, what's up with the growing heart? Growing, what, let me ask you something, because I'm from the South, man. <laughs> Is Boosie like your brother, or what's up? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But everybody say, do you see the resemblance or no? Yes. Okay, so I actually met Boosie. You met <laughs> And I told, I walked up to him and I was like, what's good, big bro? I'm your sister. And what did he say? And he was like, what? I said, I'm Flav daughter. He said, oh, because he was lit. He was like, oh, uh, I told my daddy, I told my daddy I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, can I get a picture with you real quick? And I took my little selfie and That's I walked hard. off. Like, no, really? <laughs> yeah. Did he know, did he realize that was, that you was his daughter? So I don't think in the moment he did, but cause we, um, they did like the special, the Grammys did the special for okay. hip hop or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we were there. So it was like a little commercial break or whatever. And then I told my dad, I'm like, yo dad, Boosie over there. So when I told him, he went up, he got up and I followed him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, because I wanted him to introduce, so he know I'm not lying. You feel me? So I walk behind him, and he like, "Boozy, look, this this my daughter." Da da da. da. And then, the crazy thing too, my dad used to have a podcast. Really? And yeah. It, you could catch it on YouTube. He he be too busy now, but I actually am the one who got him to interview Boozy. Wow. Oh, yeah. When That's everybody cool. was like, "Oh, they look alike. They look." When that all that was going on, so crazy. I reached out to Boosie's um, manager. I kept DMing, DMing, like, I'm Flav's daughter. I need you on his podcast. Please help me, help me, help me, help me. And then finally the manager got back to me and I helped them set it up and all of that. Wow, that's great. So you you see the resemblance. You know it's happening. Uh, they both radical. Uh, yes. Of course, of course, they both, that's a crazy conversation. <laughs> to see them two, that energy is on a Together. whole nother level. Oh my God, listen, I can show you pictures and videos because I was recording them and stuff. Like, look at these fools over here. <laughs> like, father and son. Them. <laughs> but we not really related, of you course. know. It's, it's fun, though. It's all yeah, fun and yeah. games. We, so. all, we all, look, man, we all got, we look alike when it comes down to who we are as a people. Yep. And like I said, what Flavor stood for early on was us like that. You know, for as it, I, you know, all of us, man, Chuck D. Him, I felt like that movement during their time helped us to really, really feel, you know, like strong about who we are as a people. And I think we need that so much more today, if we could unify in that way, because it wasn't as unified as you would have wanted it to be. Like we talk about unity today, but it was a lot more. I felt it was a lot more then than it is now. And Most with them, definitely. the flag and the way they held on the clock and all, it meant something. The music meant so much to us during that time. Right. We didn't have a lot at that time. Mm -hmm. So now, Flav, dope, him and all that movement during that music, New York, man, big ups, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So you come down Thank here from you. New York thinking you just going to come. What made you move to Vegas? What, what was up? Did some boy had you come all the way down here? I actually did move here with a boy. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't make me, so... <laughs> 
he's he's my ex now, but that had been my best friend since I was about 15, 14, 15 years old. Um, we started dating when I was 27. Okay. Mm. And when we were in high school, we used to talk about all of this all the time. Like, he does music, I do music, you know, he has a good personality. Like, we just, you know, so we would sit there up late at night and just talk about like, yo, we gonna be celebrities one day. Like, we gonna be stars. We gonna do this music shit. We gonna do this TV shit. We gonna take over. We gonna move to the West Coast. We gonna do this. And it just so happened that <clears throat> I got on Growing Up Hip Hop. I got the opportunity to be on a part of Growing Up Hip Hop. Yeah, I see that. Um, and then I bought him a part of it with me and he kind of helped manage me and my brother during that time. And then that's when we started dating and we were like, we came here to do a few scenes. And I actually went to move to LA, but LA is just as expensive as New York. You know, I was just getting mm -hmm. financially together. So I was like, where can I go that's close to LA so I could really push this music and entertainment stuff, but I could afford it until I'm where I want to be financially. And then me and him, <clears throat> when we were here filming, we were talking about it. We walking down the strip and we like, yo, what if we live here? Like, it's a four hour drive, a 45 minute flight to LA. It's cheap as hell. The weather is nice. Like The weather is what? I don't like the snow. <laughs> so the I prefer is... the heat over the snow and the this cold. Heat? Yeah. Mm. I get to wear She's less clothes. Like, <laughs> listen, I don't like clothes. I like to be half they get him free. It's like a hundred. You don't. You don't walk outside at all. You oh, go hell from. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Girl, that's why you I go from all the building to the car, <laughs> from the car to the house. Okay. <laughs> the only time I'm outside is when the sun is down, <laughs> or if I'm in some water. See, that's <laughs> why. I, I growing up hip hop. How was that? You know, just you and channeling. You know, the energy with your father and just dealing with that. What was the What was the scenes and what was the things that you remember the most about that? So. I remember everything, but one thing that really touched me, like, I feel like my dad finally heard me for real for the first wow. time. Like, I got to really open up to him, like, yo, dad, like, I got some resentment. Like, you wasn't there how you should have been there. You feel me? And now that I'm an adult, I understand you was building your legacy. You was creating your name. You was putting that work in that you felt you needed to for yourself. You know, so when I was a kid, I didn't get that. I didn't understand that. And it made me mad, because it's like, I don't care that you're a flave. I don't care that you rap. I don't care that all these people like you. I just want my dad. Like, mm. I want you to come to my, ba my basketball games. I want you to come pick me up from school. Like, I don't care about none of this shit. But now as an adult, we finally, we were able to sit down on growing up hip hop and wow. have that conversation with each other. Like, you know, I was sad. Like, you know, it's been times where I've been homeless. It's been times where I done dealt with men that I shouldn't have dealt with and I should have been able to talk to you about it, but I don't feel comfortable because you wasn't there for me when you should have been, you feel me? And like, he really heard me. Like wow. he, he listened to me and he told me like, you know, I'm sorry. Like That meant a lot, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that's therapy. That's very much therapy to open up and talk about it, no matter where it's at. Just to be able to have that conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that's huge, you know what I mean? Yeah, it felt so good. And then not even just that, because a lot of kids wish they could do that with their parents, Even not even just kids, adults feel like, I can't talk to my dad or I can't talk to my mom, just like how you did. How would you advise them to um, build the courage up to do so? Just do it. Just like, like I was scared at first especially because we were recording on TV. But before I even did this show, I had a conversation with myself. And it's like, I'm getting an opportunity to tell my side of the story. I'm getting an opportunity for all those people who built perceptions of me before getting to know me. All those people who had an idea of who they thought I was. This is my time to show them who I really am and to really show them what's up, you know? So I'm not gonna go on there and make it seem like I grew up in a mansion with a silver spoon in my mouth, because I didn't. No, y'all gonna get the around the way girl from the Bronx who who's always with her gang, who hangs out with more men than she do women because she's a thug, you feel me? Yeah, like, yeah. this is who y'all gonna get. Y'all gonna get me talking about me being homeless and having to figure out and find my way in this world. Y'all gonna get me talking about being in abusive relationships, whether it's physical, mentally, emotionally. I'm talking about whatever I gotta talk about because this is my time to be true to me. Right. So, you you just gotta do it. Do it. Like, I know it's scary because it's your parent. You know, you don't wanna be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't wanna hurt their feelings or anything, but 
y'all generation, y'all don't have the resources and stuff. Y'all didn't have the resources right. and things that we do now to know this is wrong, this is right, this is how we make something better. So because I have those resources, I'm gonna bring them to my dad and it's up to him whether he receptive or not. I did my part. I said my piece. So I'm happy. Well, you was know, it, old hold on, school. Was it because of this why you two started coming together closer? Was yes. This? Yeah, I was going to say that too. Yes, definitely. Like that after, helped a lot, right? Yeah, after that conversation and just working on the show and stuff like that, ever since then, like, he really heard me because, like, he check up on me. He'll call me. If he don't hear from me in a certain amount of time, he's calling me. Mommers, you all right? Why I ain't hear from you in a couple of days? What's going on? I'd be like, my bad, Dad. I was in a weed coma. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, yeah, man. Like he'll come, bang on my door, and like if I don't, if I'm not answering nobody or anything like that, because I deal with like you know my demons and stuff sometimes, depression, sometimes. depression, mental health, and all of that. And on Christmas this past year, actually, I just stayed in my house all day sleeping, and him and my brother came banging on my door and he know my little passcode to get in my house and he just walked in he don't even give a damn i could be butt ass naked he'll just mommers you all right why you in here sleeping come on let's go we leaving i'll be like all right <laughs> like, wow, wow. yeah that's, that's good, good to have man so you um the thing you you out here and he's out here right yeah so that's the good thing man like i said it's a blessing to see that how important is god in your life very important like from both sides of my family. My my mom is Catholic, well, raised Catholic. My dad is Protestant. And both of them, since I was a kid, I went to Catholic school. I was always in church. But even though my dad, like, I didn't get to go to church with him on his side, still, like, God is very important because without God, none of this is possible. Wow. Like, he's the reason why we open our eyes every day. He's the reason why I have clothes on my back. He's the reason, reason I have air in my lungs. and. I always have to worship him and follow him. Like my father and my mother, they don't play with that. They're not the most religious, but they gonna say that all the time. But how old were you when you found God for yourself? Cause that's a difference. That's you know, when you're young, your parents put all this stuff and they made you do this or so forth, but to find him for yourself. So a lot of times something have to happen. And then you'd be like. I would say, I was, I was an adult. I was in college. Um, I am bisexual, mm -hmm. so I met this girl, and like going into college is when I started to realize like my mental health mm -hmm. and like just my identity, like trying to figure all of that out. And I met this girl, and she was just so like, like content isn't a good word. She was just like, just happy <laughs> like and she was bisexual and she w dealt with things that i and she just spoke about it so freely so i used to hang out with her a lot and she she actually helped me find god because it's like you know in the catholic church in the bible oh homosexuality is bad mm -hmm. and this that and the third mm -hmm. and she had to sit down with me and be, realize like we are god's children right and i'm like yeah and she like god created us us in his image right and right. i'm like yeah she like so how can you be bad? How can he not love you? Like, it don't make sense. I know the Bible say this, and in church they try to push this, but forget all of that, because that's not God. Like, you will hear him, he will talk to you. And I try to like just focus on that. And one day I was sitting there in my dorm, and God came to me and was like, like literally I heard it in my head, like, I love you, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. And ever since that day, he was just like, just let go. You're gonna be good. Cause I used to be very reserved. I used to be very quiet and laid back like to myself. I didn't really, like I used to be real shy. Now, what? It's Kush Nasty, baby. We here, what up? You know why? Cause God love me and that's all that matters. matters. I, 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 say, I say to that, you know, just, just on a, a, a whole nother note, <clears throat> everybody, everybody is always evolving. Everybody's always on certain levels. There are certain devils for certain levels. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of times people look at you in the, on, at the level you're at or look at the thing that you got going on and try to make a bigger spectacle of it than what their thing is. Because mm -hmm. everybody got a thing. Right. You see That's what I'm saying? So, <laughs> so trying to figure out whose thing is the worst is a thing that it's not even up to them. 
Right. So I think that's the main thing. Just know that when you start pointing, the devil is the the accuser. So mm-hmm. when you start accusing, just know what spirit you're coming under. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, you so right. I say that all the time because, like, in, in my eyes, I don't feel like there's a right or wrong. How can there be a right or wrong? Who, who created right or wrong? Like, we're only supposed to be here and be who we are and love. That's it. Yeah. Like, so just because you like something that I don't like, that don't make you wrong. That don't make you... You know, the devil, no, none of that. Like, no, God created us all in his image, and he created us to be the people that we are to give our thing to the world. I think the biggest problem is, like I said, where you at today, you're 30-something. When you turn 60-something, you'll be a whole nother different level. Oh, definitely. So what I'm saying is all these different levels, all these different evolutions, you have to face them how you face them, and I believe God can bring you through them. And I do believe love covers a multitude of sins. So I think as long as you keep loving, like you keep saying, you know, he always say, uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But mm-hmm. how can you love your neighbor if you don't love if yourself? If you don't love yourself. So these are the things we have to keep you know, in mind when we're serving God. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I never, as you evolve, all I want to do is just watch you and be proud of you as a person who believes you know mm-hmm. what i mean and i think that's where we get through because the only one who pulls you through and snatch you out the fire is god it's god every time you know what i mean when you was homeless right you was homeless you said mm-hmm. who when you was in that wherever you was at where was you at was you on the streets yeah I so slept. you were truly homeless yeah i just slept in a park before i just slept do you know what an incinerator is no like the trash like in a high-rise building the trash chute Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to sleep in there before because that's the only warm what place that I could go. You to go be homeless because I was finding my way, you know. Like I said, you decided I, to break away from everybody. Yeah, like I'm I'm my mom's oldest kid with my well, I'm her oldest kid, period. But all three of her kids are with my dad, and I'm the oldest, so it's like you know I had to grow up fast, and it's like I felt like I was a burden on her at a point to where it's like no I don't want her taking care of me no more I'm grown enough to take care of myself you know I, I thought I had it all figured out how old were you at this time um the first time I was 19 and then the second time I was like 23 and did your parents at the time know that you were homeless or you you were like faking it with them and then being homeless at the same time so Yes and no. I was kind of faking it. Like, oh, I'm staying at my friend's house. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, I'm doing that. You know, I I didn't really tell them. One time I told my dad, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to a shelter. And he laughed at me because he's like, in his his defense, he knows my family ain't going to let me do that. But... I don't want to follow rules. I don't, if I, especially if I'm working and I'm growing and stuff. I'm not coming in the house at nine o'clock. I'm gonna be outside doing what I want to do. You feel me? Like that's why I said I was trying to find my way. Yeah. And it's and you, we all know when you stay in somebody's space, you gotta follow their rules because it's right. their space, right. you know. And I didn't want to do that. Like so, I'm I was being rebellious, and so I didn't want to stay with my grandmother, or I didn't want to go back to my mom's house, you know. Like so. That's why he laughed, and I. In the moment, I was upset. But as I got older and I understand life a little bit better, he's laughing at me like, "Girl, you know, you know, you don't need to go to no goddamn shelter." Wow, <laughs> like, wow. But you went. No, I stayed. I stayed sleeping in the hallways and stuff like that, of like different buildings in the right. Bronx. And then finally, one of my friends let me stay with them for a little while, and I was able to get start get figuring off. things off. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So. Um, you said you mentioned that you were in gangs. Okay, so I, I'm not. I wasn't in a gang, but I I hang out with gang members. Okay, you know? okay, because yeah. because you, you mentioned you said it, so I'm like, okay, so you were a part of. I'm, I'm a like, gang member by affiliation. Affiliation. You know? Just checking. I'm yeah, just you, checking. you know what happened when you live in the hood? It's like, okay, what up, y'all? I want to be down, and then they start talking all them crazy rules about getting jumped or doing weird and you're stuff. Like, nah. I'm like, all right, maybe <laughs> maybe let's reconsider this. Maybe I just be y'all friend, like, and y'all just tell people that y'all know me. All right, cool. <laughs> so. I want to talk to you about um, being on. Uh, you was on Family Feud. Yes, yes, and we how was. was. That experience? How was it? It was so much fun. Oh my god! You know what was it? Let me tell you right now. Okay, I am, first of all, my family we're very competitive. Mm-hmm. Like very. Who did competitive. you compete against? Uh, it was like a group of comedians. Um, like which group? They Who? have. Um, and okay. 
I can't remember his name. Andrew, I can't remember his last name. Okay, well, don't worry about it if you can't. But they all have a podcast together as well, and they're a group of comedians. And they were really cool, but as soon as we got there and I seen them, I told them, I said, you're going down, all right? You're Mm -hmm. going down. Because I've been preparing for Family Feud my whole life. I watched that show (laughs) religiously. So you put it you did better. Listen, so. You quick with it. And that's Steve Harvey, right? Yep. And he's hilarious. He's, during the commercial breaks, he got us dying laughing. I know, he gonna keep something going. My father. When it comes down to that show. Right. Like, I have seen a lot of people do. I love the, I, I love the way he. You watch it all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm better here. than her, though. Well, I think probably I'm better, better than you. you. No. <laughs> no. I, I, I know you ran up on the nigga, What's but up? I'm really that guy. What's up? Like, not, we can I test mean, this out. I don't know. I ain't got no shit in there to hit, but boy, if they ask me a question, I'm coming off the dome. Listen, me too. I meet you every time when we at home, Man, so don't that's start. Fake, that's Look, fake news. Go, go watch my episode. All my answers was right, okay? All of them. All of them. Quick. All quick with it. What's up? What made you love it so much? Cause I like playing games. Like I like, you know. Most girls do. Thinking no, <laughs> no, 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 not those games. I hate those games. <laughs> but I'm like, I like to be, you know, challenge myself. I yeah. like th- my brain to keep going. So games, they do that. Yeah. Like they make your brain move. Tell me the funniest thing that happened during that segment. Okay, it's two. Okay. The first one was on our way to the show. It was me and my three older siblings and my dad who were on stage at the show, right? And we in the Sprinter on our way to the studio and we all coming down hard on my dad like, you better not mess this up. You better get your shit together. You don't sit there and tell stories. Just answer the question because he like to elaborate. He'll be like, he'll give you an answer like, oh, the sky is blue, but the sky is blue because the sea and this, that, and the third. And I remember this one time and it's like, no, we don't got time for that. So we yelling at to him. Win this thing. Yeah, we yelling at him. So <laughs> after we yelled at him, we all sitting there going like this. Practicing. Practicing. And we telling him, hey, hey, come on, let's go. Practice, practice. And he's just looking at us like, <laughs> like he was done with all of us. Then we on the stage, we doing fast money. My dad is up first. They, Steve asked a question. How old were you when you had your first French kiss? Now, my dad is a very little person. He thought he was talking to him specifically, mm-hmm. not the hundred people that they surveyed. He gonna say six years old. <laughs> we saw, like, we were just talking about our hey, lunch, I just Listen, so oh, He said four. I was four. What? He said four. What was y'all doing? We ain't gonna be putting this out, bro. <laughs> that, that, this is not me. You getting an interview. Let's go. Nah, man. <laughs> we gonna have to talk <laughs> because oh, fair. Yeah, you oh. and my father four or six, yeah. and then y'all got the nerve to be on our generation yeah, ass. Just, like, <laughs> come on, I was, I was at least like 14. I'm not, I'm not I'm, listen, I'm not, I'm really not the one being interviewed. Let's keep going. <laughs> <doing this. laughs> listen, all I know is that you should have heard the whole audience was like, oh. <laughs> Everybody, wow! And it's like I'm, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, oh God, because I know the story. Yeah. You feel me? And I'm just like, in my head, I'm like, Dad, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the mass majority of America, okay? Not you and your wild boy self, okay? <laughs> like, was, yeah, it was like, uh, I'm like, oh, we knew that. <laughs> thank God, my older brother came through and cleaned it up for us, you know, because. He gave a more appropriate answer, 15. That, yes, high That's school, yeah, you know. Yeah. Six, bro, you in kindergarten. Why do you even know what a French kiss is? What is happening? Like, it was funny though, you know. It, it saved him because we won, so. Wow. You know. So I think, and, and you gotta understand, man, how long did that show actually last? The, is, how, how long is it and how is the production being you watching it they go to commercial right. what's up with that so it, it took us a few hours actually I think we was there maybe like three four hours something wow. like that yeah cause it's like you it's, it's kind of like any other stage show like you on the stage you know you doing the questions like the way you watch it on TV but when it's a commercial break like they did give us breaks and stuff cause it was so hot so like you know you could get water you, you talk to the audience and stuff like that okay. reposition and everything freshen up makeup mm-hmm. you know and then alright back on like wow yeah <clears throat> let's get into the artist uh, uh, street a little bit let's get into the music like how old was you when you found out you was gonna you know 
get into music and start to perform? Um, so I've always been into music, just like my dad. My dad plays like over 14 instruments, self-taught. Me and all my siblings, we all at least play one instrument. Okay. So when I was younger growing up, I played the trombone and the drums. And it started off with that. Then when I got into like junior high school, high school, I started hanging out with um, my cousin, actually, Molly Porter off the Molly Water. Y'all can follow him or whatever. But. Already, shout out. <laughs> yeah. That gonna cost you $500. <laughs> shout out to Rain. <laughs> but I started hanging out with him, and he's, uh, when I tell you he is, he's not a rapper. He is an artist. He okay. is a musician. Like, when I tell you he, I never met anybody like him in my age bracket. You feel me? Like, he's nasty when it comes nasty to pain. Like, it. nasty with beats, with mixing and mastering, with writing verses. Like, sometimes I got to call him like, yo, Molly, I'm stuck. And I'll send him what I got. And he'll throw, he'll finish it up and kill it for wow. me. Like, so we started hanging out and stuff. And he used to have me in the studio with him late at night to wee hours in the morning, just listen to him, listen to him. And then one day he was like, yo, Cushy, why don't you write something? Well, this was before they called me Cushy. They used to call me Dizzy. And he like, yo, Dizzy, why don't you write something? I'm like, no, I'm scared, I'm scared, like, you know. Like, I play instruments, I'm in the studio, but I'm more the behind the scenes, I was shy. So he like, come on, come on, write something, write something. And I'm like, all right, bro. So I found a beat, I was obsessed with Wiz Khalifa at this point in time, and I found a, a Wiz Khalifa beat. And I wrote my first my first verse by myself. I had to be like sixteen, and I was like, I smoke me one, smoke me one with my homeboy. I stay louded up. I'm always making noise. Cause she a batter bitch that always handle hers. Niggas on my ass, like where my Vickies is. Yeah, and I just I was like, and I had Dizzy in there, but I had to change it to Cushy, you know. Yeah. But like I just wrote it. And it was like he was like. Oh, you playing? You need to stop playing. Da, 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 da. And even then, I still didn't start recording until after the show. After growing up hip hop, I moved here. I, I always known Payback. I've known Payback. Shout out to Payback because that's my engineer, Shout my out producer. To Payback, that, that's my guy. Like he could pull it out of me. Like, and we ended up getting closer and stuff. And he had a serious talk with me and was like, listen, you, you talented, you a star. Everybody be telling me that, like, oh, you're a star, you're a star, you're a star. But I don't know. It wasn't clicking. Yeah. And then Payback was like, no, you need to stop playing, like, for real. Like, stop playing. And I was like, all right. So I just started writing songs and stuff like that, starting just writing little notes. Like, I'll think of, like, one verse and I'll be like, or one bar. And I'll be like, oh, that's fire. I should say this. Then the days later, another bar or a couple bars, and then I'll play them all together into a verse. And then I went to Payback Studio, and it been what like Amazing. three, four years. That's hard. Yeah. <clears throat> did you ever do anything with your dad? What did your dad say about your music when he heard it? Um. So when he first heard it, he's like, "It's good, you know." But like, you know, I'm talking like a girl. Like uh, I'm talking, and I'm like, "Oh God." My dad is about to listen to this. Let me, you know, like, oh, God. And he's like, it's good, it's cool, you know. But my dad is real old school, yeah. you know. And then I wrote this song for my my ex that I told you about. Um, when he broke up with me, I didn't take it real good. And that's actually what pushed me to be in the studio consistently. Yeah, Because like, yeah, yeah. I was in a really dark place. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote this song for him. And I recorded it with Payback, and I damn near was in Payback studio crying behind the mic when I was saying this. Like, I was very vulnerable. And he's like, yo, D, go, you killed it, man. Like, I could feel you mm -hmm. in this song. Like, I feel your emotions. I could, your dad no, Payback no, is telling okay. this. So, he's like, you gotta let your dad hear it. Wow, so, here you go again. I always, I always send my songs to my dad. So this one song, I'm in my house one day, my dad laying on my couch chilling, so I sent him, I, me and Payback had recorded like three, four songs this day. I sent him all of them. He listening to them, listening to them, whatever. I'm in the bathroom and he plays the song, the one I wrote for my ex. And all of a sudden, excuse me, I'm in the bathroom, but I hear. So I'm like, what the hell is that? 
So I get up and I go walk into the living room and he was from laying down, like he was laying down on his phone listening to all the rest of them. That song, he was standing up in the middle of my living room, giving me a standing ovation, wiping his eyes. Wow. And I was like. Because he felt it. Yeah, I was like, he was like, mombers. Dad, I felt, and it made me cry. And I was like, oh my God, dad, please. Don't make me cry right now. What's the name of the song? Um. Is it something that's out? No, it's not out. So we don't want to. I want to hear. I want to. You can hear, hear it. Oh, no, 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 no. I want you to say oh, a part verse. of a verse that would be very impactful. Ooh, right now. dang! The, I feel like the whole song. Just is give that, me a little bit. Um. Okay, I gotta remember it because I. I try to push that song to the back of my head. <laughs> it made me emotional, you know? So like, um, okay, what I said, move the Vegas, bah. move the Vegas, different phases, it was me and you. Um, friends and lovers, strangely, ah, damn, I can't remember it. Yeah, ah, yeah. That's fine. But yeah, like. It's just a, it's it's just, just a real, it's a song that's pretty much um, that near and dear to, who you are and what you've done, the moves you made, and yeah. how you felt about the situation when it was coming together Over. and tearing yeah. apart, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of spoke about- I spoke, come, like, I spoke about literally coming together whole, and how y'all yeah. moved and everything. Just everything. Entirety. But yeah. a lot of people, because people think that when they're going Organic. through things, when they're going through things, they think that I'm the only one going through this. Every time, a lot of time, people are going through it. But that's why when you can put stuff in music, people fall in love with it because they're like, man, I'm going through that right now. I mm -hmm. feel you, or I went through that. I, fe I feel where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Because we're never the only ones who are going through what we go through. That's, That's what really. helps me with my music now. Because, like, remember I told you I used to be real shy. Mm -hmm. I'm still overcoming that shyness when it comes to my music. But that's what helps me with my confidence in my music. Because it's like, I, everybody ain't going to like it. Just like everybody don't like me. You know, I'm not everybody cup of tea. Mm -hmm. My music is not going to be everybody cup of tea. But I know that it's going to touch somebody. Because mm -hmm. I'm not the only one that's experiencing this. Just like I've heard songs that resonate with me to where it's like, yo, how you know my life like that? Right. You feel me? So it's like when I record, when I go in the booth, even if I'm doing a... Throw that ass to the circle song. Like, Whoa. Hey, I'm Lil Roddy. Shout yeah. out to Lil Roddy. You know Lil Roddy? Oh, hell yeah. Stop. You know, listen. Shout out to Dallas, Texas, Lil Roddy. He yeah. be on my show all the time. Oh, yeah. That's my guy. Listen, listen. I get a little. And Mike Fresh. That song right there. <laughs> <laughs> that song. Yeah. Hey, listen. That That's so song. hard. Only Man. if Bones was around during that time, boy. Because <laughs> he would have been calling me like, girl, I need you in my video. Everything I see you doing. <laughs> Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Ooh, dead. Any, any, any genre. Any genre, too. Ooh. Okay. Um, dang, can I give you my top five? Nope. Nope. Top three? Top is three. It? Cut it. All right. Kurt Cobain. Okay. That's Man. one. Um, That's how you say. Let me see. Tupac. Okay. Tupac At number was three. the realest. Uh, fabulous. Fabulous. Wow. Yeah. I played, she didn't, she didn't. Yeah, I, I was waiting to hear that part. Really, oh, that, oh, no, 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 that no, is, no, 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 no. He's no. number zero. Like, <laughs> nobody comes before him. He's the, he's the golden egg. <laughs> you see, Clay, that Yeah, because you ain't about to get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, though, what, so, so you really, Kirk O'Bain, what, what made you like him so much? Nirvana, I love Nirvana. Like okay. I could listen to Nirvana all day. I'll be you, you liable to see me on these Vegas streets driving in my car talking about one baby to another says I'm not <laughs> I'm in jail. And I know people be looking at me like, what the hell is that girl listening to? Why is she banging her head so hard? What's going on in that car? <laughs> like yeah. But yeah, like just just not only his music, but his story. You know, like the like you one of the like most iconic rock stars. Yeah. But you deal with things just like the average person does. Like that's why he not here no more. You wow. feel me? Wow. And it's like just to 
know that he was able to hold on as long as he did hold on dealing with the demons he dealt with and give us a piece of him and leave it here for this world it's like that's amazing to me like wow. Jimi Hendrix too like that's another one like, yeah, like I love I love all of that I love just their stories that's what make me love them as an artist yeah like if, yeah. if I could relate with your story and it's some substance there I'm gonna listen to your music wow I love you we well rounded, you know. Thank you. I got so I gotta ask this. You know, we're in election season right now, oh. and I, I, I'm, I'm trying to see. That. I'm trying to see who are you voting for this election season. So, <laughs> all right, this, and why? This is gonna give me some hate. So I actually don't want to vote for neither one. You of like them. me? Like, I don't want to <laughs> vote for neither one. Like I feel like they both. But bad you gotta choices. vote. Your fingers on the thing. Who do you vote for? I'm voting for Trump. Wow. wow. I'm voting for Trump. And because, all right, so hear me out. And this is the first black female president Listen, possibly. I know that. And it's like Kamala, Kamala. How, I don't even know how to say her name right. But I want to support you, my sister. But you put too many of my black brothers in jail, girl. Like, wow. I don't respect it. Like, I have a lot of friends. One of my best friends did 10 years in jail. You feel me? Did she put him in jail? No, no, no. <laughs> she did. But it's just but like. But you just hear stories, nightmares. You feel me? Like, you know how many times I done had to go to jails to visit people that I know? And all the, the things, the documentaries I've seen. It's like, this is supposed to be a reform. And this is not reform. This is hell. Like, y'all not helping these men. If anything, y'all making them worse. And then y'all gonna put them back into society. That don't make sense to me. Like, and it's like, instead of her trying to help, I just read an article where she, there was a man that he was convicted of murder or kidnap, something like that. She put him in jail. Come to find out, they found evidence that proved he was innocent and she went and they went to try to do an appeal and she went and tried to stop that appeal to keep that man in jail wow i don't respect that you call yourself a black woman you should be helping your black man the black man is the king how are you a black woman and you're not helping the king we can't be a queen if our king ain't all right we just beating our kings down. That don't make no sense to me. Like, so, yes, do I want to vote for the first black woman president? Of course. The first woman president. Of course I, w I would want to. But it got to make sense to me. She don't make no sense to me. Wow. Then it's like, all right, yeah, you helping people with kids and stuff. You helping the families and stuff. I don't have no kids. I've never been pregnant. I never had an abortion. No, none of that. And you know why? Because I need to be married. I need a foundation before I start a family. I'm not going to sit there and have a baby with you and you can't even give me your last name or give me stability. But you think you could put a baby in me that I got to create and be possible whereas I'm going to be stuck with the baby teaching them everything they got to know and they're a black baby in America and I got to do that by myself. That mm. responsibility fall mm. on me by myself. Mm. No. I get it. Help the families. But what about people like me? I'm struggling. It's real. Like, I work a nine to five and I pay all my bills by myself. And sometimes the check is short to where it's like, I got to rob Peter to pay Paul, but I don't qualify for food stamps because I don't got kids. That's not fair to me. Like, no. and Trump, yeah, he's a bigot. Yeah, he's a racist. Do I like him as a person? No, I don't. I respect him as a politician. He's the first politician to ever break politics down to me to where I understand what the fuck is going on in the country that I live in. He's the first politician that looked out for me when I when during the pandemic. Oh, baby, I was up, okay? <laughs> I was out here styling and profiling mm -hmm. Uncle Trump, Uncle T, shout out. Like, you feel me? He looked out for the families. Yeah, he gave them more, but he looked, he looked out for us little people too. Wow. Us people that... I'm not ready to start a family. And he gave me a way to still be able to provide for myself when all these jobs was closed down and stuff. I was able to eat. I was able to pay bills and stuff like that. You feel me? A lot of politicians don't think like that. You feel me? He, he may be an ignorant person, but he is a smart politician. Wow. So I want to, when you think about the way this whole system set up, and I'm about to close it, but when you think about the system, and this just talk, you know, to go four years or, and then everybody go against each other for this whole election, seven, eight months, and then we come alleged or supposedly back together again. That system to me is, that is a weird system. Mm -hmm. you know, if everybody hates each other for six, seven, eight months, nine months, and then they lose, 
whoever loses is not going to be happy for this win. You still split. There is no there 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 there's nothing that says okay we're good now. Think about right. that. Right. We we still not good. You right. seen that when they were trying to get him out of office last time? Mm -hmm. The country is divided. Yep. To this day, because of the system that we we worked up and put to well, they put together. I was about to you say because us black we people, didn't we nothing. didn't do that, right? Yeah, we didn't do we nothing. were bought here. But we just okay. brought into the situation, <laughs> right? They just I just don't know about that that whole. You know what I mean? You, you see no, what I'm yeah. Saying? Listen, it's weird. We me. here, <laughs> we here because it don't make no sense to me. And then all the black people be like, oh, but this that that. Um, excuse me, y'all talking about joke. these people that just that put us on boats and forced us to come Under here. Same and clean their dirty clothes? What is you talking about? Same system. <laughs> like, that shit crazy, It don't man. make sense. That's why I, most of the time, I just be like, whatever. No, I think the only time I voted was for Obama, and that's because he was the first <laughs> black president, okay? I just, I, that's it. I, I, after everything else, it's like, y'all on your own. I don't care. Thank whatever. You. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed this. Love your energy. Man, I got, you know, we got to get flavor on here. You got to bring him one day. I got you. You got to be like, next time when I come up, I'm going to call you because I got your number now. Yeah, so let I'm me know. hit you up and be like, I'm coming to town. We gonna, we'll do both of y'all or something, you know, oh, whatever. That, that'll be a time. Oh, man, we cut up. <laughs> I'm going to cut up. Have y'all ever done that. it together, a podcast? No, we haven't. Yeah, but I'm going to cut up regardless. Whoever get on here, you already know that. Don't <laughs> oh, yep. yep. <laughs> I'm going to prepare him on the way up. I'm like, all right, so yeah, look. Too, like, Y'all one in the same, all right? Y'all speak the same language. I'm telling you, y'all here. No, we just be cutting up. I think it's our era. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's all it is, man. We just, we stand up, man. Shout out to you, man. Like I said, Thank you. I'm going to be watching for you. If you got music or anything that you're trying to push, anything you're trying to plug, make sure you tag me in it. Yes. So I can help support your music. I like, actually got a song that I'm working on right now with Payback. And... I'm still playing around with names as of right now. We're calling it Cash Flow, but stay tuned for that. You know, your girl. I was talking about shit or whatever. Design in the <laughs> building, man. Good shit. It's going down, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We love you. Thank you for having me. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. <laughs>